Well, hi, my name is Andy Tidy, and welcome back to another episode of Canal Hunter Series 8. In this series, we're trying to track down the original line of the James Brindley Canal as it went from Birmingham all the way through to the Staffs and Worcester Canal north of Wolverhampton. Well, in this episode, we're going to step outside the direct-ish 22 and a half mile route, and instead we're going to follow Brindley's original route into the coal fields of West Bromwich. We're going to move off the broad, deep new main line here at the bottom of Spawn Lane Locks, where we left Canal Hunter at the last episode. This is a place where the old and the new main lines share a, share a channel. But then we're going to branch off at Pudding Green Junction, and we're going to head to the top of the Riders Green Locks. This bit will be shallow and weedy, but it's still completely navigable, and it's a section that we do travel on with our boats each year. Well, at Pudding Green, we're going to turn off to the right, onto what became known as the Wensbury Old Canal. This was a local network comprising the Ridgeacre branch, the Dartmouth branch, the Halford branch and the Jesson branch. And of course, the Bulls Hill branch, which is the section that we're going to follow all the way through to the terminus of the original Brindley Birmingham Canal at Hilltop. This is going to be a case study into the decline of urban canals. From deep water here to increasingly reeded up lengths near Riders Green and then completely dry when we reach the Ridgeacre. But here at the foot of the Spawn Lane Locks, it brings us to what was once a very highly industrialised area, with branches fanning out into all the surrounding ironworks and brickworks. And these included the Parker branch directly opposite the foot of the Spawn Lane Locks, serving the Albury Carriage Works. It's at this point that Telford recycled a half a mile of Brindley's old canal channel, which went more or less where he wanted it to go. And for just a few minutes, boaters on the new main line find themselves negotiating some uncharacteristic bends. Beyond Bromford Bridge, you come past the Bromford Ironworks and then onto the Ireland Green Colliery Basin, followed by the Piercy Colliery Basin. And then towards the end of this reach, you come to the Piercy Brickworks. All this heavy industry gathered around its source of power, a small coal mine, all long since gone. And then as we pass under Bromford Lane Bridge and we see Pudding Green Junction ahead, the old canal loops off to the west, opposite what was the Piercy Brickworks, a loop which contained a couple of boatyards at either end and plenty of industry in between. This old loop of canal was still in use for over a hundred years after the new main line was built. And then finally, the loop and the land it contained was sold off in 1964. So to appreciate the loop today, we're going to need to fly the drone over its course.
and so the old lost loop rejoins the main line opposite Pudding Green Junction and that's where we're going to go. I sometimes struggle to give the right name to the following sections of water and really what you call them depends very much on the era in which you're imagining it. These days Pudding Green Junction leads into the top of the Riders Green Locks and it's seen as part of the Warsaw Canal but if you look at the old maps it will be described as the Wednesbury Old Canal. But for the purposes of this mission, it's the northern section of the Birmingham Canal navigation, engineered by the worthy Mr Brindley. Just to the left there was the Albion Interchange, a place where the goods were moved on and off the London and North Western Railway. But of course that was all long in the future as far as our Mr Brindley was concerned. With a ready supply of coal and ironstone, this area really was iron central. With the Nelson Ironworks leading into the Wood Lane Ironworks, then the Vulcan Ironworks, followed by the huge Eagle Ironworks. And between all this, there were the Tube Works and finally a huge tar distillery, a site which became part of the huge Midland Tar Distillers operations. So we've arrived at the top of the Eight Riders Green Locks. These were built in 1786, 17 years after Brindley engineered the mainline canal which leaves off to the right. For now we're going to press on down the line of the Birmingham Canal, or the Wensbury Old Canal as it later became known. So on the opposite side of the canal, in a site still occupied by a chemical works, there was the site of the old Midland tar distillers. And just down the old mainline to the right there was a staircase lock that rose to a basin at the back of the works. That would undoubtedly be privately owned but that would make the third set of staircase locks on the BCN. Today just one remains at Braids. These days the old branch is being engulfed by a sea of reeds but it was still navigable 10 years ago. The canal banks used to be lined with heavy industry including the Victoria and the Swan foundries and these led on into the Swan Gasworks with its distinctive wooden gas tank, followed by the Swan Village Interchange Basin opposite the Ridgeacre branch, which was itself our later addition to this obscure canal network. The return to water as we approach the Black Country route is very short-lived. The Black Country route was built at water level in the 1980s, cutting off navigation but retaining a drainage function to the remnant of Canal Beyond. From here on we're heading out into the realms of the abandoned canal. For those canal hunters among you of a sensitive disposition you might like to fast forward the next few minutes because as we move down the line of the old Brindley Canal it becomes increasingly weed infested until the channel is completely choked. These days you can't get a boat more than a few hundred yards down here. But as recently as 10 years ago, I managed to get my boat all the way down to the Black Country route. Sadly, this was one of the arms which has been lost to progress.
some miracle GWR's Swan Village to Good Station Interchange Basin has survived right behind me. Its entrance is still spanned by its original lattice bridge and opposite stood the gasworks which help orientate lots of the old photographs of the area. Long after Brindy drove his canal through here another network of waterways was built off the 1827 Ridgeacre branch and that included the Dartmouth, the Halford and the Jesson branches accessing yet more collieries ironworks, brickworks and chemical works. I think you got the picture. Well from here behind the Ridgeacre pub the old canal bed dries up and became known as the Balls Hill branch and I've accumulated a good collection of old photographs of this waterway which last saw traffic in the 1950s. But I think that will have to wait for another episode. So now it's goodbye from the old Swan village and the Ridgeacre pub. Happy hunting and I will see you on the Bulls Hill branch very soon. Cheerio.